Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last section of the cell unit titled Bioenergetics. Bioenergetics is the study of energy transformation, specifically the energy transformation that occurs in living things like cells. Each type of eukaryotic cell and some prokaryotic cells have a specific organelle that carries out this energy transformation. Your cells and mine, animal cells, have mitochondria that carry out a process known as cellular respiration. And we're going to talk more about that in a slide to come. Plant cells have chloroplasts to carry out photosynthesis. And like animals, they have mitochondria to carry out the same process, cellular respiration. A little depiction of mitochondria for you pictured here on the right with their noticeable uh, inner foldings within their inner membrane called cristae. So inside the mitochondria, which both plant and animal cells do have, we find this energy transformation process called cellular respiration occurring. Now, most of you out there know the mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, and I say that's unfortunate only because, well, the mitochondria is a lot more. And if you ever continue on your biology learning, you'll find out just how crucial the mitochondria is to your cells and your overall health in, as an individual. Now, you've all heard the myth that sugar gives you energy. Well, it kind of does, but it's not the actual molecule of sugar that's energizing you. What happens is your cells, specifically the mitochondria, goes through this process of cell respiration to make a new molecule, a molecule highlighted here in yellow and talked about in our second bullet point here called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is the power source for all your cells' activities and all your activities. The, the motion of my arms as I speak, the movement of my, my jaw as I talk is all powered by ATP, a chemical produced via cell respiration in the mitochondria. Now, there are three steps to cell respiration. And I'd like to draw your attention to my illustration here on the right first. We can see that from left to right, we have glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, also known as oxidative phosphorylation. Don't get too bogged down with this uh, lengthy term, oxidative phosphorylation. Just call it the electron transport chain, or ETC. Now, notice that the Krebs cycle and the ETC happen inside the mitochondria, which we can see pictured here. The only step of cell respiration not to occur within the mitochondria is the glycolysis. Now, why? What's so special about glycolysis? Well, what does glycolysis kind of sound like? Glucose, right? In the process of glycolysis, as you can see pictured beneath the name, we take glucose, sugar, which we derive from everything we eat, and our cells will break it down into this stuff called pyruvic acid, okay? This stuff called pyruvic acid is the stuff, the chemical, the molecule that enters into the mitochondria, into the Krebs cycle, and ultimately into the electron transport chain. All right, now notice, please notice, every step of this process does produce adenosine triphosphate, ATP, energy for your cells. Now, why would every step produce energy? Well, that's because every step requires energy. So in most, at least the first two steps, you're just replacing the energy used to carry out these procedures. It's not until this very last step where you have a very large net gain of energy within the cell that can be used elsewhere to power other uh, events within the organism. And please note, before we move on, 
This process is called cellular respiration. When you hear the word respiration, you probably think about breathing, right? At least I know I do. Well, when we breathe, we breathe oxygen. And so do fish, by the way, but that's for marine biology. When we breathe and take all that oxygen in, that is our aerobic capacity, right? Aerobic referring to in the presence of oxygen. Now, if you notice down here, my last bullet point, when it's not covered up by our uh, options here with the Google Slides presentation, you, cellular respiration is considered an aerobic process. Well, what does that mean? Well, simple, really. It's a process that occurs in the presence of oxygen. It needs oxygen to be present to happen. Okay, so glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, the ETC, these three stages that make up cell respiration, the process to make ATP and power you as a living thing, needs oxygen. So every breath you take provides the environment necessary to make energy in your cells. Now that's animal cells. Let's move on to plant cells. Plant cells have something called chloroplasts. And they're only found in plants and some bacteria, some prokaryotic cells. Now, they're only going to be found in prokaryotic cells that carry out photosynthesis. We know plants carry out photosynthesis. That's the conversion of light energy into chemical energy. But some bacteria, some prokaryotic cells, can also carry out photosynthesis. So any living thing or cell that carries out photosynthesis must have these structures, these organelles, called chloroplasts. And again, chloroplasts is the site of photosynthesis, the site of converting sunlight, light energy, into chemical energy. But what is that chemical energy? I'll tell you in a second. Chloroplasts take in sunlight. That sun energy, light energy, can powers a process to convert that light energy to the chemical energy known as glucose. Yeah, the same energy that you eat, all right? The same molecule that you derive from food, plants derive it via the process of photosynthesis, converting light energy into chemical energy to make the chemical glucose. Glucose is a very energetic molecule. So, now we see that chloroplasts make glucose, but if animal cells, they didn't, they didn't use glucose for energy. Animal cells used glucose to make ATP, the energy source. Do plants just use glucose as their energy source? Hold that thought. Let's talk about this chloroplast pictured up here in the left. If you've been wondering, that's what this is. Uh, you can see in the image, it's surrounded by an outer and inner membrane. Okay, there are two membranes. And then on the inside are these kind of like almost poker chip looking stacks of membranes. What the heck are these green things? Well, these are membranes and we call these stacked membranes thylakoids. And these thylakoids are green. Why are they pictured green? Do they have some kind of pigment making them green? I sure hope so. Because that pigment is called chlorophyll. Okay, chlorophyll is what makes a green plant green. And because these thylakoids are loaded with the stuff, anytime you see a green plant, you're really just seeing the pigment chlorophyll within the chloroplasts of the plant cell. And this chlorophyll pigment is quite important for the process of photosynthesis. Now, let's take it back for a second. Animal cells needed glucose to make ATP. Plants have chloroplasts that take sunlight, light energy, and convert it to chemical energy, glucose. But what about ATP? Are plants still going to use ATP? And if so, how are they going to make it? Well, plants have chloroplasts to convert light energy to chemical energy, and then that chemical energy goes to another organelle, one you may be familiar with, the mitochondria. All right, 
Plant cells have both a chloroplast and a mitochondria, whereas animal cells only have the mitochondria. All right, animal cells are able to, animals are able to take in food, consume food, and your cells take in the glucose from that food. Now, not all plants can do this. Plants, not all plants are carnivorous, although there is a small subset of carnivorous plants. So plants need to be able to make their own glucose to power cell respiration. Yes, cell respiration still happens in the mitochondria of plant cells, but this process of photosynthesis is what gives the plant cell the glucose necessary for cell respiration to occur. All right, and if we follow, if we follow this little flow chart from our chloroplast, we see sunlight hits the chloroplasts. That light is converted into carbohydrates, specifically glucose. That glucose then travels all the way to mito the mitochondria, where within a plant cell, the same three stages of cell respiration are gonna happen. You're gonna have glycolysis, you're gonna have the Krebs cycle, and then you're gonna have the electron transport chain. And overall, during the process of cell respiration, you're gonna net a lot of ATP, usable energy for the cell, and there are some byproducts, some accidental things made during cell respiration. You get carbon dioxide and water. Well, both of these things go back to the chloroplasts and are used, again, to make the glucose to feed cell respiration. So it's an ongoing cycle. There's a very, very close relationship between chloroplasts and mitochondria when it comes to plants. But remember, animal cells only have a mitochondria.